Another major part, and you'll know this if you've listened to Dr. Dre's The Chronic, um, or you watch the, the scene in uh, Straight Outta Compton where he's playing the, the Moog, um, and, he, and he's playing the, the, um, the keys, and he's playing the synth line, a lot of real high pitch synth sounds. Um, a lot of melodies um, made from a, a, a synthesizer. Um, you think about that, uh, that's horrible, um, but you know, that's, that's a synthesizer playing a high-pitched melody, and that really becomes a major part um, you know, of G-Funk's style. Um, you'll hear that with some of the beats made by Cold 187, um, and um, a lot of Boogie influences. So Boogie is like a earlier 80s uh, funk, you know, modern boogie funk. Um, it's a little bit like more disco, but still funky, but a lot of synth type sounds. And we'll learn that, you know, P-Funk uh, artists use the synthesizer a lot. Um, part of the fidelity and part of the overall aesthetic is big, booming, bimping, bumping, no doubting bass lines. Like you had to have the bass be incredibly fat. And, and, and that's why a lot of G-Funk records um, had brought back the um, live musicians to play stuff and then they'd sample that so they could have a, literally have a bass line tracked out just the bass line and, um, and they could just rock that as loud as they wanted in, in the mix and they could manipulate that in the mix. Whereas you're a little bit more limited <clears throat> where you're using some of the methods I showed you a little while back of, of filtering and also like replaying bass lines from bass notes um, that you sample. Um, but yeah, the bass was thick, okay, booming. Um, most of the samples that were ever, were ever used or interpolations that were ever used, and I'll talk about that, but um, mostly everything that was used, there were pretty straight up loops. Um, not a lot of chopping things up. So on the East Coast, uh, Premier, uh, Pete Rock, uh, Large Professor, et cetera, et cetera, you know, they were all into the chops, you know, chopping stuff up, masking their samples. In G-Funk, it was like, it was looped melodies, looped bits and pieces, samples that are pretty much minimally altered, maybe just the tempo or pitch, um, but these are both vocal and melodic samples were often un untweaked. It was like, it was less about hiding your source and it was more about like, who cares? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, someone's already used, you know, this Leon Haywood shit or someone's already used this Zapp and Roger loop. Um, who cares, you know, uh, with a lot of the East Coast, you know, artists and producers, that was a major thing. But with G-Funk, it just didn't matter. It was like it just had to sound good and good sound was priority, okay? Um, but a lot of times, you know, these samples were replayed. So Dr. Dre would, um, he'd sample a drum break and then he'd take different drums and he'd play over that drum pattern, that drum break pattern with different sounding drums. He'd replay the break with different sounds. Um, he would also do what, what we call interpolation, um, which, which is Dre would, um, you know, if you can think of copyright criminals and all that stuff, Dre would um, license to do a cover version. So he'd get a publishing, you know, mechanical license to do a cover version, which, which is basically, if you want to record, um, you know, do a cover version of One Nation Under a Groove, right? You get the license, which is fairly easy, and, and you have a band re-record um, One Nation Under a Groove, and then you sample that. And what that means is, is that you don't have to pay a record label. So typically when you sample something, you are, um, you are having to clear it from whoever wrote the song and whoever owns the sound recording of it. Dr. Dre figured out, you know, you, you take out the record label if you just license to do a cover version and then you sample your own sound recording of it because you own that, that, that cover version, that, that recording. So interpolation is, is that process of, of, of doing a cover version and then only taking, um, you know, a small portion of that that you sample, okay?
And I'll talk a little bit more about that.